Welcome back to Ski Dad TV. In this video, I'll be presenting what I think is the ultimate ski racing math problem. So I've talked about for a long time how a deceleration or a stevet or a butter or feather at the top of the turn will inevitably be faster down the race course than a deceleration or a speed dump at the bottom of the turn. And I've always justified it that you have gravity to help you. If you lose speed up here, you have gravity to help you 9.8 meters per second through the fall line to get you sped back up before the next turn. And if you lose speed at the bottom of the turn, then you have to get across the hill like this without the aid of gravity or as much gravity to get you over here. And so you're going to lose more speed or more time or be slower overall if you're slowing down at the bottom of the turn than the top of the turn. But I've never been able to mathematically prove this. And I'm not able to because it's way too complicated of a problem for me to do. Now, I did take calculus in high school and in college, so I know this is a calculus problem. However, there's too many variables, and I've forgotten so much of calculus that I can't achieve this math problem by myself. So this video is my attempt to lay it all out with parameters to put out there to the ski racing world, some engineers, whoever can tackle this and come back with a definitive answer. So let me take you through everything I've got to get to this point so we can get everybody on one track so we can get people out there working on the same problem together. And then I think it's gonna go in different directions after a lot of people tackle it because there are so many variables. So let me try and lay this out as best I can. This is my golden ratio template for drawing a turn. Okay, and the way I do it is I line it up like this, draw my turn, and what I think I've done is connected my two turns at about 60 degrees. Okay, so the golden ratio down here, this template is based off of this image here. What I think I'm doing is if we were to draw a line, the radius line from here in the A square here, about 60 degrees from 90 is what we'd be getting. So this line right here, Oops, sorry, not very straight, 60 degrees, okay? This being 90 degrees right here. So we're connecting the two turns 60 degrees out of completion on this turn. Here is where the center of that square would be to here, 60 degrees. Flip it over here, the center of the other square we're working off of, this one right here, the B square here is going to be somewhere around over in here ish i think it might even be that corner and so we'd come off of this 60 degrees here 60 degrees this being again 90. now i may be inverting my 60 maybe that needs to be 30 but i'll leave that up to the mathematicians the people solving this problem to decide so that's the first variable i want to tackle then I want to define some numbers. The curves here are going to be feet. Okay, golden ratio is what we want the curves to be. Gravity, obviously, 9.8 meters per second. The pitch of the slope, I'd like it to be 30 degrees. However, if that puts things in, third, in three dimensions and that's too difficult, then we can always use a pitch of zero degrees or 90 degrees, depending on what that needs to be, but we're talking straight down. So the gravity, the acceleration down through this curve um, will be 90 degrees or zero. And then I think after the problem is solved, adding in the pitch of the slope will be a little bit easier. But um, I think if someone gets to that point, then starting with 30 degrees for a pitch after you've solved it in just a pure vertical gravity scenario would be the best way to go about it. Uh, let's, uh, let's call the skier 70 kilograms. I want this to be done as a three turn section. Okay, I can only draw two here because my template is big enough that my board can only take two turns. But I do think that an entry of 15 meters per second, okay, entry speed, we'll call that velocity one, equals 15 meters per second. Okay, entry speed, one turn, two turns. Let's have a third turn. And the speed, the exit velocity, Okay, and they're going to call this V3 for turn three is, is what we're trying to solve for. Okay, so the solution that we're looking for is what the velocity is coming through. And the, well, actually, it's the velocity coming through, but also the time from starting at a zero second to how many seconds to get to 60 degrees at the bottom of the third turn is the answer that we're looking to solve for. So it's either going to be V3 or T for three turns. 
okay? Um, a, the distance A here, or the radius from where in my template here, the center of the A square, the big square, starts here, here to here, this right here, 15.2 meters, okay? And basically I did that by putting gates in where I think the gate should be in this turn section. I called this 27 meters between the gates. And then by measuring that distance, then measuring this distance, I came up with a ratio and I got A, this radius right here to be 15.2 meters and B, the smaller section to be 9.39 meters. So I'd like to stick within those numbers for this um, math problem, okay? I think that is all the variables we need to account for here. Now, we wanna look at a deceleration, here's the acceleration formula, at about 75 degrees into our uh, first radius here at about 75 degrees, we want a deceleration over a meter of distance, so deceleration for one meter of distance right here, okay, um, of, let's call it a deceleration of three meters per second. So we'll do deceleration delta uh, D, deceleration, okay, equals three meters per second per second. Okay, so we're coming in at 15 meters per second. The deceleration that we're looking for is three meters per second per second over a distance of one meter within the arc, okay? And then we go back into free falling with gravity or skiing 30 degrees um, with the aid of gravity through here. And then at the second turn, we're gonna have another deceleration. Okay, this will be the second deceleration. Again, three meters, three meters per second per second over one meter. And then the third turn will be the same thing. We're at 75 degrees into the radius. We wanna be de decelerating at three meters per second per second. Okay, and then we're looking for the velocity, the exit velocity out of turn three, as well as the time it takes to go from point zero, okay, and we'll call that 60 degrees into the, uh, into the radius, okay, um, to 60 degrees at the exit of the third turn. Now, the second piece of this is going to be the same math problem, however, we're gonna move the deceleration down to here, okay? And we're gonna also call this 70, what well, can we call it? Yeah, we'll call this 75 degrees, 75 degrees, 75 degrees again at the bottom of the turn, again for distance of deceleration equals one meter and deceleration equals three meters per second per second, okay? So the second uh, answer that we're looking for is the exit velocity with deceleration at the bottom of the turn for one meter of deceleration of three meters per second per second, bottom of the turn here and the third turn, bottom of the turn there. Um, what is the exit velocity and the time it takes to go from entry to exit of a third turn with decelerations at the bottom of the turn? And I think that is all the information you need to solve this problem. Now, I'm definitely looking for GMVS, the Worldwide Leader in Ski Academy, Stratton Mountain School, Burke Mountain Academy, Sugarloaf, somebody in the Midwest, uh, CMAC, I don't care, anybody. Um, a ski academy should be taking this math problem on. I'd like to see the seniors make it a class project and come back to me and actually share the results via video. I'd love to see it. Um, or if just there's an engineer out there, if there's a master ski racer that can solve this problem and can come up with some solutions for this, I'd love to see it. I would like to know if my theory, my philosophy is accurate and to what degree. Now, once somebody has this all worked out, I believe they'll have a standard formula where we can start messing with the parameters. And some things I'd like to be able to answer once we mess with the parameters is what does a change in um, arc have? If we go to 65 degrees, on each end of the turn. So coming further across the hill, what is the change in times versus being at 50 degrees? Okay, so I wanna be able to vary those degrees all the while linking the two turns directly together. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to a deviation uh, part of the formula and come up with solutions if we're just skipping this part of the turn. I don't, I think that might be too 
far outside of the scope of this problem. But if we could look at that part of it, similarly, if we can look at where the best spot in the turn to have a stiv is. Okay, so if we can move this, let's stick with one meter um, distance of stiv or of, of deceleration, same three meters per second per second, but move it around on that line. How does it affect as you're moving around on there to your time coming out the bottom? And then we can start playing with the pitches, okay? If we get to the point where we have now a 30 degree pitch on this uh, formula, how does the exact same uh, decelerations at the top, if that does end up being the, the proper solution, it's faster to decelerate the top, how does that change as the pitch gets flatter or steeper with where the deceleration is, how long it is? I think it'll be on a gradient and maybe there'll be some graphs or some math that show us and give us some insights into the uh, mathematical best way to ski race. Another variable would be if we come in at different speeds, does it have a different effect on you if you're coming in faster with having decelerations or if you're coming in slower, how does this have it? And then we can start messing with the distance of the decelerations or the, the level of decelerations. Maybe uh, we find that larger decelerations, heavy decelerations don't have as bad of effect on your time as little ones if the, the distance is shorter and kind of start playing with all the variables, moving it around, kind of coming up with an idealized approach to ski racing. Now, obviously this is just the math and it's never reality. It's just a model, but I'd like to build the model. And I think this is the way we're going to do it. Once we get the formula in play, we can also start messing with the A's and B's. Okay. In slow and when we get our radiuses down shorter, or does the math change? As we shrink down these radiuses, does the deceleration have a different effect on the overall speed or the time coming out the bottom of it? And I think as always, we should be thinking about expanding our three turns into a 45 gate race, okay? So an equal 45 gates, use the three turn model within that 45 and let's see where we come or let's see what we get for an answer. Basically, we can take every variable we have here on the left and change it within our formula and come up with different solutions for different people. Maybe we find that heavier athletes can get away with more deceleration than lighter athletes. Again, the model can tell us if we can get the math figured out and come up with some graphs and maybe some solutions. And then of course, we can start messing with the radius part. I do think, however, that just sticking with phi is gonna be the simplest way to go about this because when we start shrinking radius and changing that around, it's gonna be harder to connect them. So I think phi is the way to go and maybe after we've started messing with all these variables, then we start messing with the radius pieces. Thank you for taking this on. I really appreciate it. Leave comments in the section below. Like, subscribe, do all that. Thanks for watching Ski Dad TV. Keep shredding out there.